don't want a lot for Christmas. Baby, Somebody sit in the back said, Woo! One thing I need. This mm-hmm. sounds similar. This sounds like some of y'all choirs at y'all church. Underneath the Christmas Some of y'all music directors sound like this. I just want you for my own. Woo, sing. More than you could Shondo. ever know. Let him use you. Let him use you. Come on, here we go. Make my wish come true. <laughs> All I want for Christmas. My. Oh, look, we gotta we gotta go listen to my favorite part. Yeah. <laughs> More than you could ever know. So make my wish come true. Woo! Let him use you. Mm-hmm. Shut up. Dang. Oh, that's Live crazy. from Brooklyn, New York. Come on, whoa. You're listening to the Culture 316 Podcast. What's going on, everybody? And Merry, well, I'm going to say it. Merry Christmas. And Happy New Year. And Happy New Year. My name is Jay the Creative. I am Sandy Claus. And we are back for another special edition of Culture 316. Today is going to be very, very different because this is our best of the year and best of the decade um, special. Uh, so, Really quickly before we do that, though, since it's, you know, Christmas spirit, mm-hmm. what are some of the best uh, wrestling-related Christmas gifts that you've ever gotten? Um, I would have to say, oof. So for every year that I got a WWE video game, I would probably equate that to like a best Christmas mm-hmm. gift because the majority of the time I ask for Christmas gifts it's for the majority of my life it's WWE 2K or WWE 13, mm-hmm. 12, SmackDown vs. Raw. So any game within those lines. So what about you? Um, last year I got wrestling shoes, which mm-hmm. I needed. So I was like, yay, wrestling shoes. I can go wrestle now. Um, WWE video games, very similar. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Like, you know, the best one I would say would probably be my uh, sneakers, though. So, yeah, my wrestling shoes. And this year I'm getting kick pads. My mom, I told my mom to just buy them for Christmas because I'm just like, why? I, I'm, I might as well, right? Right. Get a little Christmas guy. I don't have to spend $60 out of my own money. My mom could do it. I mean, it was gonna, she was going to do it anyway. She's going to do it anyway because she provides just like how our God or I was provides. just going to, you know, hey, mom, could you just transfer me the money and I'll just buy it myself. Just quick pay. Anyway. Quick pay. Nah, quick. We use Zelle. But even though we use Cash App, really, because I was Fargo. Oh. She has Chase. Yeah. Anyway. anyway. <laughs> we are going to do our best and worst of 2019. So we're going to go through, read you off the list real quick. Best match, best and worst match, best and worst pay-per-view, best and worst rivalry, best and worst heel turn slash face turn, best and worst segment, and the best female and male wrestler and best tag team. So um, it was two selections, one pick and one honorable mention. So um, we are going to start with the best match of... 2019. So, with the best match of 2019, my automatic pick goes to Adam Cole versus Johnny Gargano at NXT TakeOver New York for the NXT Championship, that two out of three fall match. My opinion was an instant classic and easy. That wasn't the two out of three falls. The two out of three falls. Two out of three falls. The the 25, my bad. Yeah. No, Um, that wasn't. No, the two out of three falls was at, it was a city. It was Toronto. It was SummerSlam weekend. Right? Was it? Because 25 was a regular no, match. No, 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 no. Two out of three falls was in New York. Because that was supposed to be the match that it was supposed no, to be gold for. it was that, not. It Two was out spo- of three falls was a regular match. Because it was supposed to be. That was the one where it was supposed to be Gargano versus Champa. Johnny Gargano versus Adam Cole. Or maybe. Okay. Oh, okay. I'm confused. I confused the, the three stages of hell match with this two out of three falls match. 
Okay, you're right. Yeah, so it was a two out of three falls match. So that was easily my pick for the match of the year. Uh, I would say that my honorable mention would be Cody versus Dustin uh, AEW, and that was just a really classic emotional match. That was... I believe that was double or nothing. Double or nothing. Okay. I believe that was double or nothing, but that... Those I was about to say full gear, but I was like, no, it wasn't. I watched full gear. What are you talking about? But that was... Yeah. So those are my, my matches as far as best match. What about you? All right. So my matches of the year, uh, my best match is Sasha Banks versus Becky Lynch at Hell in a Cell 2019. Regardless of how I felt about the finish, um, I love Becky Lynch and I love Sasha Banks, so I really didn't care that much that Becky won. Um, I thought that match was incredible, incredibly innovative. Um, they used the cell in so many different great ways, like uh, that chair spot oh, where yeah. um, Becky had Sasha on the chair that was hung up on the corner of the actual cell. It was hung up by kendo sticks. I thought that was a really great spot. Um, a lot of great character building for Sasha as well. Uh, her having turned heel on Natalia and Becky a month prior. So, um, very cool. That was my match of the year. My honorable mention goes to, it's not a Johnny Gargano match, which I it's mean, surprising. it should be, which is very surprising. It actually goes to Amazing Red versus Will Ospreay. Mm. That was a quite incredible match. Super J Cup, right? Yes. Amazing Red is literally, like, I wrote on my Instagram a few days ago. It was, what? After, oh, actually, it was at the beginning of the week. It was right after the H-O-G-9. Hog show. Uh, Hog 9. Um, after he won the suicidal six way from Charles Mason, he is one of the best ever. And literally every single person who wrestles right now needs to just be on their knees and bow to amazing red because he really did innovate a lot of the stuff that a lot of these wrestlers do in period. So all over the world. Yeah, period. So, so those are my best matches of 2019. Now I need to know what are your worst matches? My worst, I go with Seth Rollins versus The Fiend at mm-hmm. Hell in a Cell. Now, listen, I like Seth Rollins, so don't block me on Twitter, which he probably already has. I don't know. Yeah. Um, you know, I just feel like that match was very, you know, like it was just all finishers. It was just mad hits. And then the match was referee stoppage. So dumb. It was literally, Why would you make yeah. that decision? And then my honorable mention, um, this really isn't a bad match. I didn't think it was a bad match. It's Baron Corbin versus Kurt Angle. I just put it there because I'm just like, it has to be Baron Corbin, huh? Literally. Out of all the Chad Gable. John Cena. Of all, like, it has to be Baron Corbin. Anyway, uh, those are my, so those are our selections for. I didn't do my worst match. Oh, you didn't do your worst matches. My worst match of 2019 goes to The Undertaker versus Goldberg. I forgot about that match. Um, Because how can you forget? He needed a whole redemption match. He needed salvation. They both needed redemption matches. Yeah, they both needed redemption matches from that match because it was so bad. Uh, My worst match uh, was probably the Seth Rollins versus Dean Ambrose match for the Intercontinental Championship right after Dean turned heel. I think that was either late last year or early. That was late last year. Okay, well, if that's the case, then I'm going to go with The Fiend versus... Uh, Seth Rollins. Either way, I remember that. Rollins that was December involved. of last year, and I was so angry because it was such. It was a good build, but you expect so much more from Seth Rollins and Bro, Ambrose. Bro, the minute I swear to God, the minute these two locked up, I was like, "This is going to be a bad match." <laughs> the minute, because you do not, not build up a rivalry like that. You don't, and then lock up. That is one of the first things Amazing Red taught me. Is that you don't do something like that and then lock up. I was just like, okay. Anyway, <laughs> there we go with our matches. Next, we're going to do pay-per-views. Best and worst pay-per-views. Um, so I'm going to start with my best pay-per-views. I, for one, think Class of Champions 2019 was actually pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, but that actually is my honorable mention. Mm-hmm. My favorite pay-per-view of 2019 is the Royal Rumble. Mm. Both Rumble matches were essentially, you know. Really good. Pretty good. Pretty okay. Um we had a great women's championship, two great women's championship matches, Becky and Asuka, the, to open the show. And then you had um, Ronda and Sasha in what a lot, of, what, what was probably like the sleeper match of the year. Absolutely. Because those two, okay, okay. We already know Sasha's great. We already knew Ronda was great. And I was waiting for this match. This was a match that I really wanted to happen. And I said, I literally said weeks before, I was like, it's going to be Sasha and Ronda at the Rumble. 
and that's what happened. Uh, yeah, so those are my two best. What are your two best? My two best have to go with AEW Double or Nothing and NXT TakeOver New York. So AEW Double or Nothing, when I when I assessed the show, number one, it was their first official show as a company. Well, True. their first big pay-per-view as a company. I looked at the way With that the it, official AEW branding. Yeah, exactly. Um, I looked at the way that it started. I looked at the way that it ended, and the fact that they ended off with John Moxley coming out, I yeah. feel like was just it was poetic. Right. I feel like it was a really well booked show, and it did a really good job at setting the table for AEW Dynamite, which will come later in the year. Yeah. NXT Takeover New York, with the exception of Pete Dunne versus Walter, because it was just I was already tired by the time we got to that match, was just from top to bottom just a fantastic show with fantastic storytelling so those are my picks what about your worst my worst i only have one i know i put two down here but when i realized that i realized i only had one worst pay-per-view and that Mm -hmm. pay-per-view to me was crown jewel yeah i feel like crown jewel was the worst pay-per-view of 2019 that's on that and that's on period how about you it's so funny because ours literally match so (laughs) hell in a cell um after that tag team match i basically fell asleep right um the rest of the show was just really boring Um, And Crown Jewel 2019 because, like I said, as you know, I've said it in the past and I don't need to repeat it. Uh, Yeah. So there we go for pay-per-views. Next is the best rivalry of 2019. You go first. So for best rivalry of the year, I would have to say Adam Cole versus Johnny Gargano is definitely one of the best uh, rivalries of the year. To be honest, one of the best rivalries that NXT has ever had. Yeah. Reason why? Great build, great matches. Like sometimes you get a really good build and like an okay match. You get like a okay build, but then it's a, a, a knockout match or it's yeah. just like a mediocre build and a mediocre match. This was the rivalry where the build matched the hype of the matches. Yeah. So I feel like that was that was on par. The honorable mention rivalry of the year is actually a tag team rivalry between the Young Bucks and the Lucha Brothers. I feel like this was easily one of the best tag team rivalries of the decade. Um, the reason why, it was so multifaceted. It was multi-venue. Mm-hmm. Used multiple platforms to build the momentum for their payoff match, which was that all out. And on top of that, it contributed to the character development of both teams. Like It, it didn't just stay in one place. You saw the Lucha Brothers come to the AEW press conference and attack yeah. the Young Bucks. We see the Young Bucks go to Mexico and take the titles off the Lucha Brothers. Then yeah. we see the Lucha Brothers come up to All Out and 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 have that knockout Chicago street fight uh, for the you know the tag team titles, which the Lucha Brothers won, which makes sense. But it also set the stage for Santana and Ortiz to debut. Yeah. So I feel like that was definitely the tag team rivalry of the year. Uh, should I get my worst rivalry of the year? You did your two. I did rivalries. my two best. All right, I'm gonna do my two best, and then you can do your your worst. Go oh, ahead. Matter of fact, no, you do your worst, and then I'll do. So I think I only have one worst rivalry, and to be honest, I was gonna have Rollins Ambrose as well as Rollins Wyatt. But I think Rollins Ambrose takes the cake. Um, I just feel like when it came down to overall storytelling versus matches, I felt like Dean's heel turn was fantastic, but what they did afterwards yeah. was not good at all, considering the things that John Moxley, that we know John Moxley is capable of, or Dean Ambrose. Yeah. And just the matches were just not up to par to the match quality that we know that both of these guys can generate. So that's my worst rivalry of the year. How about yourself? Well, well, best and worst, I should say. So my best rivalry, I 100% agree, is Johnny Gargano versus Adam Cole. Uh, these two had some absolute killer matches. Uh, just like it's insane. Um, I love, 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 love their match in TakeOver New York. Johnny finally getting over the hurdle. Yeah. Um, I love their match in TakeOver 25. Um, and then their three stages of hell match was just like, they're all Perfect. insane. Just absolutely insane matches. So they had, um, I think there's the best. Um, my honorable mention would go to Sasha Banks versus Becky Lynch. Mm-hmm. Of course, Sasha Banks returned <coughs> in August, attacked Natty, and then beat Becky Lynch with a chair, returned with blue hair. Um, Bailey ends up turning heel. Um, they kind of become their own, uh, re- become the Boston Hug, Boston Thug connection again. Boston Thug. Um, you know, so I thought their rivalry was good. Led to two really, really, really great matches. Yeah. So um, 
I would go with that. Uh, for my worst rivalries, my honorable mention goes to Mike Kanellis versus Maria Kanellis. Um, it's just like, come on. Like, dude. Dude. And then my worst rivalry of the year will actually go to Seth Rollins versus Twitter. That's mad funny. Because Seth Rollins and Twitter are not friends. They're just not. And they don't need to ever be friends. Ever. Period. Um, really quickly, I want to read off Whitney's. Shout out to Whitney. Shout out to read Whit. off her first three um, things. So as far as her best, she put it in the wrong, her 2019's in the wrong thing. So it's fine. <laughs> I'm just going to read off some of these. Her honorable mention is Kenny Omega and uh, Moxley at Oof. Full Gear. She loves those kind of matches. I hate death matches. That was a really good match, though. I, I really like. I it. hate death matches, so mm, wasn't my cup of tea. Um, and she also uh, quotes Johnny and Adam, two out of three falls at New York, and the Bucks versus the Lucha Bros at Double or Nothing as the best of 2019. The worst of 2019, she has uh, Hell in a Cell, um, Fiend versus Seth. She has Goldberg versus Undertaker, and she has she said literally any Corbin match as her honorable mention. No, Which I like I Baron see. Corbin. Yeah. Um, for the pay-per-views this year, she has Double or Nothing as her top. She has Wrestle Kingdom as her two uh, favorite pay-per-views. And her honorable mention is going to be uh, Joey Janela's Spring Break. Um, she loves Joey Janela, if you can't tell, yeah. by but, our Instagram, which follow us at Culture316. Yep, yep. At the worst, she has uh, Hell in a Cell 2019. She has Super Showdown, and she has Fast Lane only because it's so pointless. <laughs> Which I agree with. Um, and as for rivalries, she has Kofi versus the world. She has Becky versus Ronda. Wait, is this 2010? No, no, no. She put it in the wrong thing. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. She's Becky versus Ronda. And she has um, Kenny Omega versus John Moxley in her honorable mention. And then at her worst, she has Baron Corbin versus Kurt Angle with mad question marks. Mad funny. Um, she has Seth versus The Fiend, and she has, oh no, she has uh, Matt Riddle and um, Cassius, Ono. Cassius Ono. I was about to call him Keith Ono. I was like, wait, no, that not is Keith, not his name. Not Keith Ono. All righty, so we are going to move on to heel and face turn. Ooh. So you have to go first with this so, one. So I'm going to start with the worst, actually. My okay. worst heel face turn is actually going to be Charlotte Flair. Hmm. Now, I say that because you don't really know what she is right now. Yeah. Is she a baby face? Is she a heel? She's just Charlotte. She's just, just Charlotte point. Flair. And, you know, like, it's good to have a distinguished character. Right. But... As far as I'm concerned, I don't understand what Charlotte Flair is, so I can't, in a right sense, give her, like, hey, you are a great heel. You are a great face. If this was 2016, then she would be in best heel turn, because she was one of the best heels during that year. Right. But, yeah. Um, and then my honorable mention will go to the Kabuki Warriors. Now, being heels, they're great, but when did they turn heel? Yeah. They never turned heel. They just one day woke up. They showed up to Hell in a Cell as heels. So those would be my worst. Um, my best, I guess I'll do my best, and you could do your whole thing. But my best would go to, my honorable mention will go to MJF at a full gear. Yes. You know, MJF was already a heel. But him turning on Cody, while it was pretty predictable, and while I thought it was a little too early, I like what he's doing. I am actually becoming a fan of MJF. And I know, I think a few weeks ago on the show, I said MJF just doesn't do it for me. I'm actually becoming a fan. He's actually pretty great. And my best heel turn, of course, is the return of Sasha Banks uh -huh. uh, evolving from purple... Baby face for four years to blue hair, bad bitch, and <laughs> just, you know, the legit boss, the standard, the blueprint, you know, getting all this Fox money. Thank you, Vince. Thank you, Vince. And, you know, Probably with her, it. Ryu, and um, Mikaze, and Bailey, and Flex, just getting all this, you know, Fox money. Just thank you so much, Vince. We, we love you. So, for best uh, heel turn, I would probably have to do MJF. 
uh, simply because of just the way that it was executed. Um, I don't really have an honorable mention for it, but I do have the worst heel turn. In my opinion, it was Seth Rollins' heel turn, which was official last oh, I week. Hated that. Um, I feel like that was super predictable, and I feel like they could have there could have been another way to go about it. It was I underwhelming, that and that's the reason why I would call yeah. it the worst heel turn of the year. I would have extended that heel turn. I would have extended that, but it literally <laughs> lasted a week. Literally. The who who done it. Anyway, moving on to the best and worst segments of the year. Mm-hmm. Um, do you want to go first? I want to go first. Go so for best segment of the year, I definitely have to go with Cody's full gear Jericho promo. I feel like that was one of the most emotional promos that was ever cut in wrestling this year, probably this decade. Um and the honorable mention goes to the Going Home episode of Raw with Becky, Charlotte, and Rhonda. Oh, we got the same one. I love that. And that, I just, they were that just going great. at it. It was a great way to close I out love the show. Charlotte doing her, um, the cha-cha slide and then kneeing Rhonda. It's yeah. the funniest thing ever. They literally put the, the cha-cha slide music on the slide to the left, slide to the right. It's so funny. Go ahead. Keep going. So that, those are like the, that was like the best segment to me. Um, worst segment, dog food with Roman. Um, Mad funny. That's literally it. That's I the didn't post. hate that. That's the that's the post. That's the tweet. Um, yeah. What about you? So here's the thing. I didn't hate that dog food Roman segment because their heels getting heat. You yeah, know what I'm true. saying? I think if it was for the fact that that dog that they didn't have the stupid dog mascot earlier in the the rivalry, then it probably would have just been like, oh okay. You know, they're humiliating the baby face. Which makes sense. Um, in my, I'm gonna start my worst. My worst segments of the year, I would go Maria Kanellis announcing that she's pregnant with Rusev's child. Oh my god! Because it was just like what, like what? And then literally they were both taken off of television. So I guess Maria Kanellis, you know, I guess Rusev doesn't care about his kid with Maria Kanellis. Yeah, I was about to say. And um, my other worst segment would be Seth. Screaming in the corner when the fiend was there <laughs> with the lights flashing. Just <laughs> 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 like, dude, come on, bro. Could you be any more juvenile? You're a grown man. You're a grown ass man. Get up. Wait, you got you got two businesses. Get up. Mortgages. You got a you got a whole almost wife. I'm about to say that ain't planning the wedding. Anyway, I know that I know they're planning the wedding. Next there. segment, uh, my best segments. I'm gonna put um, Charlotte and Becky, uh, Charlotte, Becky, Rhonda, the whole uh, po- uh, pre WrestleMania go home Raw thing, and then of course I'm gonna put uh, New Day running the gauntlet for Kofi. Oh. Now it is a whole match, but um, there's that that segment at the at the very end where you know kind of like that moment. Um, I love that moment where Kofi realizes that he's going to WrestleMania. Right. And he's like, he's going. So um, love that, love that, love that. Um, and now moving on to the best uh, male and female wrestlers of the year. Um, who Start with your um, best. Yeah, your best male. So my best male wrestler of the year goes to Adam Cole. Oh, we're not doing worst. I oh. you that we weren't doing worst. No, I said, you said best. Oh, no. Okay, go ahead. He said best. Yeah, I did say best. That. Best male wrestler of the year to me, Adam Cole. When we're looking at just the the creation of a superstar, like I don't think that there's been anybody anywhere in wrestling that is built to be a star and built to be a champion and has been putting on amazing matches all at the same time as Adam Cole does. Like yeah. we look at Adam Cole's 2019 between. Uh, the undisputed era fulfilling the prophecy between right. him exactly. successfully defending his title at Survivor Series, making it the first time the NXT title was defended on a big four pay per view. Daniel Bryan putting him over. Daniel Bryan putting him over. Um, the War Games match where he put on a uh, 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 a star making performance. Oh, his matches with Johnny. So he has a rivalry yeah. of the year. He has. Uh, 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 a main vic- a main show victory over a former WWE champion. Yeah. His faction is currently the hottest thing in his respective brand. I think that Adam Cole is the best male wrestler of the year. Are we doing female best wrestler of the year as well? 
Yes, you can do your female. All right, as well. so my female best wrestler of the year. So I have a female best wrestler of the year and an honorable mention. The best female wrestler of the year, in my opinion, is Tessa Blanchard. The honorable mention is Becky Lynch. The reason why I say that Tessa Blanchard is the best female wrestler of the year isn't just because of her matches against women, but she's currently putting on great matches against men as well. Yeah. So she she put on a a knockout of a match against Sammy Callahan. She's currently challenging or in pursuit to challenge for the Impact World Championship, which is the first time, I believe, of any woman in any major North American wrestling promotion, yeah. which is huge. Um, I was going after the main men's world championship. And that's big. That's I that's feel like huge, that's innovative yeah. when it comes to wrestling. Uh, Becky Lynch, you don't even yeah, have the Royal Rumble don't winner. Don't have to explain it. Uh, WrestleMania right. main event. Like she, She's been literally killing it all year. Exactly. So, yeah, those are my two. Now, well, who are your best? Who are your... And then you can go into your, your worst. We're not doing worse. That's what I said. Oh, you're not doing worse? No. Oh, yeah. oh, my bad. All right. Well, <laughs> I said that in the chat. Bad. Whatever. Anyway. Go for best. Um, My best uh, male wrestlers, Adam Cole. Mm-hmm. I 100% agree with everything you said. Adam Cole, just incredible this year. And it's not like he hasn't been incredible the past few years, but he wins the NXT Championship finally. He um, goes on and has um, star-making matches literally all year. Undisputed Era uh, completing the prophecy like you said. It was just like, it was this this year was Adam Cole's year. It was. Um, my honorable mention actually goes to Chris Jericho, doing great work over in AEW as the world champion. I think Chris Jericho is absolutely hilarious. <laughs> Yes. And, like, I just think he's great. Now, I hate the fact that um, he, uh, you know, kind of copied the list of Jericho with the lexicon of Le Champion. It was just like, ugh, get out of here. But it was cool. Um, and my best female wrestlers, uh, my top goes to Becky Lynch. I think she's just this year alone, you know, being the first woman to ever win a main event at WrestleMania. And winning it, two championships. Winning both championships. The first woman to ever win them at the same time. She won the Royal Rumble this year. She's been champion for how long this year? She's had great matches with Sasha Banks. And, you know, her match, you know, everyone doesn't... the the. WrestleMania match is subjective. You either loved it or you really didn't. Right. And plus, it was at 12 o'clock in the morning. So it was just like, just someone win. Becky Becky needs to win already. Becky Lynch won the WrestleMania event, WrestleMania main event, at the same time that God was working something out in somebody's favor. He won the WrestleMania main event the next, the day after WrestleMania. Yo, Sis won the WrestleMania main event when, when God was changing somebody's fate. Like, God was doing his best work in the same hour that Becky Lynch won anyway, the WrestleMania main event. And my honorable mention uh, goes to Sasha Banks. Of uh, I also have, uh, if I was to get a third honorable mention, I would put Tessa Blanchard in there as well. Um, I mean, listen, Sasha hasn't really been around for the entirety of the year, and I definitely acknowledge that. But if you really put up the best matches that have been had this year, best women's matches in the company this year... There's literally three matches that you're going to put up there. And if these are not the three matches, then you're fucking lying. And I'm talking about main roster stuff. I'm not even ju- I'm not even talking about NXT stuff yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Candice LeRae and Io Shirai, Ooh. they had an incredible match. You know what I'm saying? Like, that match was great. Women's War Games is another one that was absolutely incredible Fantastic. this year. But, Sasha, the, the matches that you're going to put up there are Sasha and Ronda... Sasha and Becky at Hell in a Cell. Those are the two matches that I've heard consistently get. Those are some of the best matches I've seen this year. So and we have two more. You said the tag team of the year. Who else? Uh, I said tag team. Yeah, I think that was it. Tag team of the year for me, that's easy. I'm going to go with the Young Bucks. Okay. Young Bucks. Um, for the simple fact that these guys were already the best tag team in the world last year, and then they became executives and then created the best tag team division in the world. Yeah. Like, period. Like, these guys have literally done it all, have won every championship except the championship of their own brand. Yeah. And it's probably inevitable that they're going to win it anyway. Um, but, yeah. Mine is um, Proud and Powerful. Uh, I think they're absolutely dope. Um, my the honor- best. If I had an honorable the mention, best. which I might as well just say it since I said it, if I had an honorable mention, it would most likely go to. Um, it's oh, it's such a toss up. I, I would give it to. Um, 
private party. Oh yeah, definitely. Just to see their um, their ascent, their ascent, their evolution, just how they changed. You know, they're they're actually really great. So yeah, I would definitely give it to private party. Um, but yeah, proud and powerful um, is my tag team of the year. I think they're just so authentically them and New York. Yeah, so authentically New York. So we are going to begin our picks for the best of the decade, best and worst of the decade. Uh, so this whole 2010s era, so yeah. keep that in mind. So that counts from 2010 until 2019. Yeah, so literally until January 1st, 2010, until, you know, I'm yeah. sure nothing of importance yeah. is going to happen in this next week. So uh, three selections, two picks, and one honorable mention. So you have match, moments, pay-per-view, rivalry, heel and face turn, segment, male wrestler and female wrestler. And yeah, so do you want to start? I want to start. So we're going to start with the best match. I don't really have, this doesn't really go in order, uh, but actually it does go in order. I'm going to give the best match, one of the best matches of the decade to AJ Styles versus Shinsuke Nakamura at Wrestle Kingdom. Nice. Um, that's your honorable mention? Or? That, no, no, no. That's, that's in the, I'm trying to rearrange okay. that. But I think that that's one of the best matches of the decade. I think for the inter, it was for the IWGP Intercontinental Championship. So good. The next match is Sasha versus Bailey at NXT Takeover Brooklyn, um, and my honorable mention is Tommaso Ciampa versus Johnny Gargano at Takeover New Orleans. Those are all really self-explanatory. Uh, what about your worst? My worst matches. Okay, we're gonna start with Sting versus Jeff Hardy for the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. You know the oh one where gosh. Jeff was coming out on lean. Oh lord. Um, so we're going to start with that. Then we have The Undertaker versus Goldberg at Crown Jewel. And for the honorable mention, Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns at WrestleMania 34. Oh, my gosh. We were there. That match, like, it... It was horrible. It was just, like, no one cared. No one cared. There was no story. It was just 20 F5s. Hold on. Brock Lesnar is here. Brock, Brock Lesnar is here. Ah, uh, okay. This was one... Okay. So I'm only going to make one exception to this rule uh-huh. because technically it is still 2019. So I'm going to add one thing in from 2009 Okay. for my worst. But I'm going to start with my best. Yep. Um, with my best, I'm going to do Sasha Banks versus Bayley at NXT TakeOver Brooklyn. Of course. Everyone knows how much that match means to me. I can literally watch a clip of that match and get emotional. Um, you know, I got to tell them how much it means to me. I, of course, you know, it was at access and you're trying to move quickly and you have time limits and stuff like that. I really only got to speak to them for like 30 seconds. But um, you know, that match is the reason that I'm returning to wrestling school next year. So, yep. you know, it's yeah. Um, John Cena versus CM Punk, uh, Money in the Bank 2011, Ooh. went on to launch pretty much Punks. The punks, you know, real like the real rise of who he was in WWE. Right. Uh, that's how people remember him. Like I remember Punk being like a uh, long hair, really kind of grungy and stuff like that. But um, once he turned into you know this version of CM Punk, like he really became one of my favorite wrestlers of all time. Yep. Um, and then my honorable mention goes to John Cena versus Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam 2014. Because I've never ever seen someone get so soundly beaten like that. And yeah. for it to be Super Cena, and literally that was the first my first reintroduction into wrestling because I remember I came over we watched it right here in your living room. Yeah, I remember when Dark was talking about and how much John Cena was gonna come back and it dead didn't happen. Yeah, and, and John Cena literally got his ass whooped, whooped. like it was whopped. like Molly whopped. As for my worst, uh, I'm gonna go for the Royal Rumble match, the 2014 Royal Rumble match. Hmm. Um, Daniel Bryan did not win that match. Daniel Bryan wasn't even in that match. He wasn't. Um, people hated that. People hated the finish to that match. Um, I would almost lump in the 2015 match because it was like two, it was like a double whammy. It was like, right. nobody wants this. Um, <sighs> literally nobody No one it. wants this. Next, I'm going to put Jerry Lawler versus Michael Cole at WrestleMania 27. <laughs> because for why? I don't even count Why? that as a match, to be honest. It was a it, oh, it was a sanctioned match. And my mother's annoying. <laughs> she's going to see this, but she's getting on my nerves. Um, and for my honorable mention, it's going to be... I don't know if... I don't know, uh, tell me if you've ever seen this match. Survivor Jenna versus Charmel at TNA Victory Road 2009. Now, yep. it wasn't technically in this decade. It wasn't. But... 
That match is horrible in any decade. I haven't watched it, and I don't want to watch no, it. No, you need to. Mm-mm. Jordan. I'm fine. You make me watch all these videos. You're going to... I'm one day... Oh, okay. the first show of 2020. I'm going to show you what we're leaving in the last decade. We are leaving Survivor Jenna versus Charmel. <laughs> that match is horrible. Horrible. Well, I mean, technically, got left in the decade before. That match is horrible. Anyway, you're right, but um, it would, yeah. So those are my best and worst matches of the 2010s. Now, pay per views. So I'll start with this one. My honorable mention goes to Battleground 2016. Mm. Very great pay per view. One of my favorites. Um, you have uh, Bailey's debut, which I will still to this day is one of the biggest pops in the latter years of WWE. Um, You have the Shield Triple Threat match, which was a match that uh, almost made evented WrestleMania 32. Yeah. Um, And then you have some pretty good other matches in the middle in there. Um, You had... I forgot the other matches. I don't care. It was still a good pay-per-view. WrestleMania 30 is actually my top one. Um, You had Daniel Bryan... Climb the mountain. You had uh, with two incredible matches. Um, you had the women. Really, the first time the Divas Championship has been defended since the women, de- since Mickey James and Trish Stratus in '06. Um, and then you had um, John Cena versus Bray Wyatt. You had the ending of the streak, which is a very polarizing moment in WrestleMania history. And then, of course, you had um, SummerSlam uh, 2013. I don't know why I put 2014 here. SummerSlam 2013, John Cena versus Daniel Bryan. And then you had the great authority uh, heel turn. You have um, even Brie and Natty, they didn't have a bad match. I I liked Brie Brie Bella and Natty's match. Uh, You had, I think, possibly one of the best matches of the decade as well. You could put this in the top 10 list. CM Punk versus Brock Lesnar. Yes. Um, so that's for, you know, my best pay-per-views of the 2010s. For my worst, I have Crown Jewel 2018, last year's Crown Jewel with Shawn Michaels. And, you know, I just, I have questions. Shawn Michaels and Triple H coming back to fight the Brothers of Destruction. And what a match that was. Um, WrestleMania 27. Do I have to tell you why? John Cena versus The Miz. Where I believe it was The Miz who got concussed in the first like five or ten minutes of that match. And then you have Backlash 2018, which was just the most slog of a pay-per-view ever. It was like, who could possibly care about this match? Who could possibly care about Roman Reigns and Samoa Joe Doing a headlock at 11.30 at night. Not a headlock. A chin lock. Anyway, so those are my best and worst pay-per-views. You can go ahead. So, for my best and worst pay-per-views of the 2010s, I'm going to go with NXT TakeOver Brooklyn, the one where Bailey and Sasha. Um, Yes. We have, well, he takes that, Double or Nothing with AEW. I feel like it was their best pay-per-view, their biggest pay-per-view, and it solidified the introduction of a new competitor to uh, professional wrestling. And then we have All In as the honorable mention. We have All In as an album mention uh, because this was the introduction of kind of the introduction of AEW uh, by way of Ring of Honor. And it just had an absolutely stacked show between the Young Bucks, between Cody, between Kenny Omega, between Okada, between Rey Mysterio. It was just a who's who of pro wrestling. And it was a completely new concept. Um, so those are my best pay-per-views. Uh, worst pay-per-views, Great Balls of Fire 2017. Oh, my God. But you know what? I don't um, actually think that show was that bad. Mm, it was. Samoa and, Joe and Brock Lesnar wasn't bad. Uh, and Alexa it? and Sasha wasn't bad either. But Great Balls of Fire 2017, and for yes. nothing else the to name alone. The ambulance along, match? Um, what? He's wilding. WrestleMania 33. Wilding. For another worst pay-per-view of the year. And Hell in a Cell 2017 as a honorable mention. I disagree with Great Balls of Fire. The name was was trash, but the pay per view itself was really great. WrestleMania thirty three, I was there. It was my first WrestleMania. I could never say that it was a bad show. And okay, I, I guess I agree with Helen Cell twenty seventeen. I don't even think I watched that show. So we're gonna talk about the rivalries. Yeah, you cut me off. Heard Sorry. You. <laughs> um, you can go first. Rivalries. Uh, number one, K 
Kenny Omega versus Kazuchika Okada. Definitely the rivalry of the decade, in my opinion. We're talking about storytelling and great matches, good build-up, good trilogy, um, and it just launched, it propelled New Japan Pro Wrestling. It, it propelled the solo careers of both Kenny Omega and Kazuchika Okada. Uh, another rivalry of the decade is uh, Champa versus Gargano. And another rivalry of the decade is John Cena versus CM Punk, as my honorable mention. Those are my three. Can I, can I give my yeah, worst? Yeah, do your worst. So my worst. Uh, Do your worst. Uh, Goldberg versus Ziggler because it didn't have any purpose. Uh, Sasha versus Bailey because it didn't have any pay payoff. And Rusev versus Bob Lashley. Which Sasha versus Bailey? I said main roster. Okay. That's why I said main. I put in parentheses main roster. Oh, okay. I thought because it I didn't have any it. payoff. It yeah, just, you're right. Well, yeah. Mm. Hasn't had any payoff yet. But as for right now, as of right now, yeah, I yeah. would agree. That 2018 rivalry was trash. Booty butt cheeks. Um. All right. So for my rivalries, I have uh, Johnny Gargano versus Tommaso Ciampa. Um. I actually put Carpa Sharpa, which is not how you spell his name. Ciampa. Uh. Self-explanatory. Um, Sasha Banks and Charlotte Flair, uh, just if not for the matches, for the history that they made. Oh, absolutely. You know, the main events in Monday Night Raws and the first ever Women's Hell in a Cell and, you know, the Falls Count Anywhere and the, the, you know, just the history that they've made together. I agree. And um, my honorable mention will go to uh, Omega versus Okada. Those two had incredible matches as well. As for my worst um, rivalries, I am going to put uh, Seth Rollins versus Dean Ambrose, the 2018 version of that rivalry. Yep. Um, while the heel turn was pretty great, um, they quickly turned Dean Ambrose into a hokey character. And, that was and Dean Ambrose just lost every bit of credibility that he had as a character um, after that match where they locked up. And I was just like, yeah, this is terrible. My honorable mention will go to John Cena versus Randy Orton. Even though the crux of their rivalry was in the two, early two, was in the late 2000s, um, they renewed their rivalry in 2014, in 2013 slash 2014 slash 2015. It was just like this is beating a dead horse at this point. Like we've seen them fight and trade the WWE Championship all of 2009. I was just bored at this point. Like stop. Right. And then uh, I would say the rivalry of the decade would be WWE versus the fans versus slash the ratings. <laughs> um, I mean, if we're being honest here, the ratings have just gone lower and lower, lower and, and lower. lower and lower. I really would say WWE versus that third hour of Monday Night Raw because it's just like Monday Night Raw drags. If we're being completely honest, like, yeah, it gives more opportunity to more talent, but it just drags. Um, so those are my best and worst rivalries. So now we are going to move on to best and worst heel slash face turns. Um, I am going to go. I'm going to start with Champa. NXT TakeOver Chicago. Yes. Uh, I think the way that was done. Like, that had me feeling like I still don't trust Tommaso Champa. Same. I'm still watching you, nigga. But. We coming for you. I was, <laughs> I was still like, I'm still hurt. Like, I still can't watch that. Like, that hurt me. And y'all know how much I love Johnny Gargano, so that really hurt me. Um, my honorable mention is gonna go to Sasha Banks this past year. I think really because it was so long overdue for her to be a heel on the main roster, and Seth Rollins turning on the Shield, I think, is the best heel turn of this decade. For if. For nothing else, for the fact that it was so unexpected. People thought The Shield was going to go on a babyface run. And for it to be Seth, because people expected it to be Dean, and then people wanted it to be Roman. But for it to be Seth, right. it was very interesting. And then for my worst, Dean Ambrose turning on Seth Rollins. Not for the actual turn itself, but for the story right. that came after that. Um, Michael Cole being a heel in 2010, 2011, 2012. That was annoying. That was annoying. He was just the the most annoying person. Just, human uh, being. Like, like Michael Cole was more annoying than Corey Graves now. And that sings like Corey Graves now is annoying. <laughs> like I like him on commentary at some points, but he's annoying. Michael Cole is just trash. 
That's mad funny. At, well, he's not trash. Michael Booty Cole is a trash. great commentator. But as a heel, when he was a heel, I hated it. Like, to, like hated it. And I guess he was doing his job, right? Yeah, literally. Um, and then my worst heel turns are literally every time Big Show turned heel in the 2010s. Like, because it was like, Big no Show's purpose. a heel now. Big Show's a baby face now. Big Show's a heel now. Uh, Big Show just turned heel aligned with the bar and then turned on them literally later. two weeks later. That's what I have to say about that. So I, we literally have this, the same except for one. So the best heel turns to me was Seth Rollins on The Shield, uh, Tommaso Ciampa on Johnny Gargano for all the reasons you explained. Yeah. The worst heel turn for me was Dean Ambrose turning heel, not because of the actual moment, because the way that he turned heel was yeah. phenomenal. What he did afterwards lost all his credibility. But... Another worst face turn was TNA's uh, immortal face turn where Fortune turned face. Now, for those of you who are not aware, 2010, 2011 in TNA, there was a faction called Immortal formed by Hulk Hogan and Eric Bischoff. And the spearhead of that was Jeff Hardy. And essentially, it was all the ex-WWE guys in one faction. Uh, And Fortune, which is a group managed by Ric Flair at the time, also had joined Immortal. So it was Ric Flair, Hulk Hogan, and Eric Bischoff as the legends, and Jeff Hardy spearheading it, spearheading it as the champion, with Fortune being within the group. Now, because of booking decisions, uh, Fortune ended up having to turn face, and because of the booking decision, it just didn't make any sense, because it's like, why would Fortune turn face? They were just super, super comfortable in... And immortal, and it just literally had no purpose. Yeah, and it was already TNA was already going to crap for it. But mad funny. Um, here's one thing uh, that I really would have loved to mention in the 2019s, but I forgot to mention um, a debut that a favorite debut that you have for the 2019s. The Fiend. A debut. The Fiend I, as a character. Yeah, my favorite debut. Worst debut. Worst debut. Um. I have a worse debut. Oh, I have a worse debut. Um, I'm trying to figure it out because I, I really don't have a worse debut. What was your worst debut? The Allure at G1 Supercard. At a, oh, yeah. The Allure. The LOL Allure. Somebody put that and I literally died. They spelled the Allure but with LOL in it. I died. They're literally the beautiful people from TNA. It's literally a it's gimmick the, from 2005. It's the beautiful people reunion. You know how Love and Hip Hop has a reunion? Shut up. Speaking of Love and Hip Hop, Chrissy... Co- <gasps> Did you see Jocelyn is coming back to Love and Hip Hop? I don't watch Love and Hip Hop. Okay, whatever. If you watch Love and Hip Hop, the Puerto Rican princess is back. Period. Anyway, I just wanted to ask you that. Uh, my best debut, I agree, is The Fiend. Um, all right, we just did face and heel turn. Yeah. Yeah. All right, moments. Ooh. Favorite, favorite, favorite moments of the 2010s. So, you go first. So I go first. So this is easy for me. Uh, Kofi's WrestleMania 35 title win yeah. is easily my favorite moment of the decade. Uh, a close second, Daniel Bryan winning the title of WrestleMania 30. Um, here for honorable mention, I have the Hardys when returning at WrestleMania Ooh, 33. Yeah. But I was I, in the building for I, that. I wanna I wanna tie it up because it's between that and CM Punk winning in Money in the Bank 2011. Yeah. Uh those are my two honorable mentions if I'm allowed to have them. And do I get Not my worst? Or, you could be worst. Am my worst? Gender retaining the, the US championship at WrestleMania 34. And the Seth Bray Hell in a Cell finish. He didn't retain it, he won it. Because Randy had oh, it. Randy had it. Randy beat Bobby Roode, and then Jinder pinned Rusev to win it. Even better, Jinder winning the U.S. title of WrestleMania for when Rusev Day was at its hottest. Mad, yeah, you're right. Um, you read all your worst? Yes. Okay. Uh, so for my moments, uh, I 100% agree with uh, the Hardys. It's not on my list, but I was in the building for that. I just remember how crazy... Everyone got it was insane in there. Like if that building had a dome, I promise you the dome would have blown off and the building would have been shaking. Like you would have been able to feel it. It was insane. Um, so for my moments, I have the rise of NXT. Mm. Um, NXT started in 2010 as game show NXT. 
And by the end of the decade, it's and by the end of the decade, it's the hottest brand in all of wrestling. Yep. Like like NXT, regardless of if it's losing, you know, if it loses in the ratings to AEW at some some points, I don't think there's any promotion that is doing the best character building, best matches, has a better women div- women's division than That's NXT. A fact. That is a fact. Um, my honorable mention goes to Kofi Mania at WrestleMania 35. So. You guys already know the story. I snuck down. I was sitting on the floor. I kind of left him by himself. But I was um, like in a place where I was like really nervous because I was like, what if somebody stops me and asks me for my ticket? So I couldn't really enjoy Kofi Mania as much as I wanted to. So in the moment, I will put that as my honorable mention on my third. My actual top is the Four Horsewomen curtain call at NXT TakeOver Brooklyn. Good one. Um, you know, it's just seeing the four of them in the ring like that, you know, because really that was the final NXT appearance for Charlotte and Becky until, of course, Becky came back um, and had a NXT match earlier this year at um, before Survivor Series against Rhea Ripley. Um, you have and that was Charlotte's last appearance in an NXT ring period. Um, and then, of course, you had Sasha and Bailey go on to do the uh, Iron Woman match at TakeOver Respect. Yeah. Um, but I think that moment really solidified change for the women's division. Absolutely. In WWE, I think, you know, I think I, that's literally my match of the decade. Sasha Banks and Bailey, that match became the standard that women's matches go we'll by. Measure it, yeah. Or were measured by like okay this women's match was good does it compare to sasha banks versus bailey at, at nxt takeover brooklyn mm-hmm. so those are my best moments um also an honorable mention will go to uh, the rise of aew this year yeah as well because you know it's the first time that there's ever been legitimate competition. legitimate competition to anything that wwe's been doing and my worst moments i'm going to do are uh this is more of a real moment than it is in wwe moment would be bret hart being attacked at the 2019 hall of fame yes that was just horrible but the silver lining was i think that was dash wilder not the uh, out, out of, of that, him. out of the guy who did it, and then walked off and like fixed his jacket. I was like, yeah, Dash Wilder is invited to the cookout. Absolutely, he's from the south. I'm sh- I'm sure he makes some ki- k- killing cornbread. Oh, absolutely. So he probably knows yeah, how to make really good chitlins. fried chicken as well. Yeah, probably. So there we go. And then uh, worst moments would be John Cena defeating the Nexus at SummerSlam 2010, Absolutely burying them because that literally... uh, kind of burying them, and really the only member of the Nexus left in the company besides Bray Wyatt, and well, the Bray only Wyatt. members of the Nexus left are Bray Wyatt, um, Heath Slater, and Heath Slater. Who's Heath Slater is like Daniel Bryan technically, and was Daniel like... Bryan technically because he was in that first. Reiteration you know, of the next. I would actually also put their debut in one of the best moments in WWE Definitely. history. The way that they just literally tore apart the, the ring, ring? Oh my beat God. everybody up. Uh, Daniel Bryan literally got fired and rehired. It's crazy. Um, so, yeah, those are my moments. Then we move on to Segment. segments. Oh so, my I'll start this. Go ahead, because I know what I'm going to say. Segments for, I don't really have an honorable mention for these, uh, but my segments, I have uh, the fans hijacking the, uh, uh, where the Yes Movement was basically born, uh, yeah. where the fans hijacked the uh, title unification uh contract signing or whatever and literally the fans would not shut up about Daniel Bryan for four minutes straight and I, that is one of my favorite moments of all time like it's just like they loved and they still do they still like we still do we still do and that's the thing but they loved Daniel Bryan and they wanted Daniel Bryan to be acknowledged and you know Literally, Hunter couldn't continue. Mark Henry, I remember he raised his hand and he was telling the fans to cut it. And then Shawn Michaels did the, the Squidward thing where he put his hand out and everybody cheered and put his hand down and they booed and then cheered again. I thought it was so funny. And then that segment literally was but, great. Yeah. And it continued to be great after that with the whole beatdown thing. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And then my next segment would be, you know, probably the segment that really changed WWE as we know it, and that's the CM Punk pipe bomb. I was promo. Say the same thing. Yeah. And my worst, uh, Bailey, this is your life. Yep. Yeah. Oh my God. So, wow. So, oh, what are you gonna, oh. and then my other worst is Piggy James. 
Piggy James did happen this year. It was uh, this decade. It was early. It was like the beginning of it was the beginning of 2010. I absolutely hated Piggy James. I thought it was the worst, worst, worst thing to ever do. And they almost kind of repeated that angle with the Nia Jax Alexa Bliss thingy. Yeah. But those two are the worst segments of all time. I'm gonna speed this up because it's 16. percent So, um. CM Punk pie bomb, right? Uh, I'm going to cross out this. Cena ripping into Roman Reigns. Easily one of the best moments of this decade. Because oh, Cena yeah. had a field day on this man. But my honorable mention has to go to Daniel Bryan come out of retirement. I agree with that And the one. worst segment of the decade, This Is Your Life with Alexa Bliss and Bailey. I just, that's it. Yeah. So there goes the segment. So, um... You know, I don't like talking about wrestlers. I don't like talking bad about wrestlers. You know, so we're not doing worse. Yeah, right? we. Yeah, Lizzie, you just I don't keep reading the chat. I just don't. I, that whole. But anyway, does, male wrestler. Favorite male wrestler. Male wrestler. Uh, actually, no. I'm gonna start with my female wrestlers. Um, honorable mention goes to AJ Lee. Mm-hmm. Uh, for my all dad. the reasons. Uh, Becky Lynch, of course. For all the reasons that she's the top female wrestler of 2019, and Sasha Banks because she consistently pulls out the best matches out of anyone in the WWE, and she had the best NXT Women's well, one of the best NXT Women's Championship reigns. I could go on and on and on about that woman. Uh, you can do your females, and then we'll do our male separate. All right, so female, I'm gonna start with Sasha Banks. Um, definitely like one of my favorites of the decade. Tessa Blanchard nice. and my honorable mention is Charlotte. Nice. Because like self-explanatory. I feel like they're the best three women's wrestlers in the world at the moment, period. My best male wrestlers, honorable mention goes to Kenny Omega. Uh, for all of the reasons that we mentioned, I mentioned before, uh, about all the matches that he's had with Okada and matches that he's just had, period. Like he's just a great wrestler. Um, CM Punk, even though he hasn't wrestled since 2014. But my best wrestler of the decade is Daniel Bryan. Mm -hmm. Uh, Imagine being fired at the top of the decade to now at the end of the decade being one of the most decorated wrestlers in the company of all time. So I'm going to go off of what you're saying. My honorable mention is Daniel Bryan, I believe, for the same reasons. Uh, I believe one of the most influential wrestlers of the the decade is CM Punk because his pipe bomb promo uh, influenced kind of this mass uh, explosion of independent wrestling. It kind of piqued the interest. And my wrestler of the decade goes to AJ Styles. When you look at the fact that at the top of the decade, this man was a TNA World Heavyweight Champion. He then goes to Ring of Honor New Japan. He wins the IWGP Heavyweight Championship in his first match. He's the Ring of Honor World Heavyweight Championship. He gives prestige and honor and notoriety to the the, the faction of the decade in the Bullet yeah. Club. Yeah. He then goes on to have one of the matches of the year with Shinsuke Nakamura against AJ Styles for the IWGP Intercontinental Champion. We then go, and he has a debut of the decade when he shows up at the Royal Rumble against Roman Reigns. He then puts on two match of the year candidates with Roman Reigns. He then wins the WWE Championship later in the year, then wins the WWE Championship again, has one of the longest in the modern era. He has been the most decorated of this of this decade. He has had the most Very true. He has had the most five star matches. He's been the most traveled, and he's still the best in ring performer. Period. So there we go with our best and worst of 2019 and the decade. Uh, so I just have one more question for you before we end off for 2020. What's up? Uh, so we're going to look into the future. So um, I have here what are two predictions for 2020 and one prediction for the 2020s as a decade. 2020, we're going to see Andrade take over. Um, I feel like we're going to see Andrade take over in WWE. I feel like we're going to see the rise of Hangman Page in AEW. Nice. And for the decade. For the decade, I feel like AEW is going to get bought out. Bought out by WWE? Yeah. Interesting. Oh, spicy over here. Uh, all right. Three predictions for 2020. Oh, two. Two predictions for 2020. Uh, I predict that... Uh, now, this is a very surface prediction. I predict Sasha Banks goes on to win the Women's Royal Rumble this year. Okay. And challenge and defeat Bayley at WrestleMania for the SmackDown Women's Championship. Okay. Um, my second prediction is I also predict that... Keep going. I'm going to check the camera. Roman Reigns will actually um, turn heel this year. What? 
Wild prediction. I know. I think Roman Reigns is going to turn heel. And then my one prediction for the decade is not a prediction. It's a spoiler. Well, actually, all of my predictions were spoilers. Because if you really think about it, I'll be knowing. Uh, But my one prediction for the decade is that I will finally... Finally, make my pro wrestling debut. Duh. Period. As the icon, the Don, the legend, the cult of personality, Sandy Claus. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I know Sandy Claus. But well, anyway, that that concludes our final episode for 2020. For 2019. 2019, my bad. Hello. Um, um, yeah. Thank you so much for supporting us this year. We just, we rebranded the show this year. Uh, so we started bring, coming to you as episodes, episodic yeah. rather than live. Uh, shout out to everybody who's been with us since we've been doing live episodes. We really appreciate you guys. Shout out to Whitney and Nora because they helped create the brand. Oh, and my the gosh. Brand. And Thank you for reminding me. All right. Yeah, we got 4% left on this damn camera. So you be, you, if you got to say something, you got to say something I fast. do. I'm going to do this for Whitney really quickly because I asked her to do it and I totally forgot to tell her to, to do them. We have 4% left on this camera. I'm going to read go, hers go, really go, fast. Go. All right. So her best and worst of 2010s. She has for the best match. She has Sasha Banks and Bailey at Brooklyn, Omega versus Okada 4, and Kofi and Daniel Bryan at Mania 35. As her worst match, she has Brock ending the streak, the men's money in the bank 2019, and Brett versus Vince at Mania 26. For best pay-per-view, she has SummerSlam 2013, Wrestle Kingdom 10, and TakeOver Brooklyn. For worst, I don't know what that first one says, so I'm not going to read it. Uh, She has WrestleMania 32 and Backlash 2018. For her best rivalry, she has Kenny Omega, Versus uh, Okada, she has Becky and Charlotte, and she has CM Punk versus John Cena. For her worst, for her, um, and she doesn't have anything for worst, for her heel turn, she has uh, Kevin Owens at Festival of Friendship. I totally forgot about that. I forgot about that, too. Um, Sasha's wig reveal and the MJF full gear turn. And then her moments, she has the CM Punk pipe bomb promo. Daniel Bryan winning at 35. At WrestleMania 30, she has AJ winning the Royal, AJ debuting at the Royal Rumble. Worst segment, she has Alexa Bliss being shirtless backstage, which was, forgot about that. Forgot about Rusev, that Lana, and Bobby Lashley. And she has the anonymous Raw GM as worst moments. For show, she has All Out, Survivor Series 2014, and New Japan. Uh, oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, me too. So good. Uh, Keep going New now. Japan Dominion uh, 2018. For her worst show, she has Fast Lane 2017. I agree, that show was horrible. Uh, WrestleMania 32. For her best male wrestler, she has Kenny Omega at her top, uh, Okada, and she has Daniel Bryan as her honorable mention. And for her female wrestler, so she has Gail Kim, Io Shirai, and Asuka. Mm, those are really good picks. But anyway, thank you guys for joining us for 2019. We'll see you guys in 2020. Yeah, that was perfect. 